Picks 106. 1-800-LAW-1010, 1-800-LAW-1010.com. He was on my TV, and I pointed to him. I said, honey, he's going to be at our wedding. She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and and I am letting you know, we're confirming that we actually are going to be there. The oh, date's good. wide open. We're in town, and it'll be fun. Yeah. A busy guy like you, a guy with your kind of agenda, and you got time for this wedding? Listen, Paul and I, <laughs> Paul has done some wonderful things for me on a personal level, uh, as he has uh, for you, Cantor, on a personal level. And, 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 and anybody that's affected me on that level, I think I wanted to invite to the party. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a wedding. Wedding, yeah, wedding right. It's a, it's a wedding. I keep forgetting it's a wedding. Uh, Paul, Paul's on the show to talk about Shelly. Yeah. Uh, Shelly Silvers mm. in, a, in a corruption trial. I know Quinn's got some questions about that. And then I got a question about the sexual harassment <laughs> uh, case, too. But we'll start with Quinn. All right, so, Paul, I'm, I'm watching this yesterday, and it's all about the jury right now. They're trying to pick jury, jury members. How, well, what kind of jury does the prosecution look for in this case versus the kind of jury that the, the, the defense looks for? What kind of people? Yeah, you know, what kind I mean, of people? Sure, yeah. You know, what we, we really don't want, no one really wants uh, engineers. Uh, nobody really is super excited about teachers. Not that we don't love engineers and teachers, but they tend to be a bit critical thinking and, and tricky. And that really applies to both sides. It used to be the plaintiffs didn't want them, but now it looks like nobody wants them, you know, because they're just kind of difficult to lead uh, in a direction. So those are folks that historically we don't okay. want on the jury, uh, although we love our teachers and our engineers. I don't want to go on record as well, saying otherwise. Uh, but clearly in a situation where uh, they're trying to find people that they view would be somewhat sympathetic to their side. You're talking about the, the prosecution or the defense? Both. You know, oh, they're going okay. you know, to prosecution to defiance one looks pretty stern, maybe military background, maybe someone who could, you know, kind of follow orders, pay attention to this. It's a bit of a complicated case, so looking for maybe one or two leaders on the jury that can kind of lead the jury and maybe some other folks who look like followers and I mean, they have jury consultants, well, people that you I hire. Watched, to, I was yeah. watching this uh, this guy on yesterday. I think he's like a defense attorney trying to explain what uh, what they what the defense wants, and, and that is they don't want to confuse any of the issues because the second that this thing gets complex for this jury, the second uh, the defense wins uh, or the defense wins. The prosecution wants to have it be very, very cut and dry. Uh, yep. Shelley did this, $4 million. You should yep. put him in jail now. Uh, yeah. But there's a lot more to it, right? Complicated case, and you've got that crazy standard, right? You've got this standard that protects people that is that is beyond a reasonable doubt. So if you start throwing some doubts or – or is the prosecution saying some confusion into the trial, they get a better chance the jurors are going to say, you know what, we sort of think he did it, but man, we can't get to that standard. We don't know beyond a reasonable doubt that, in this case, those were his motives. He may have been doing these nice things for these developers and this, and this uh, clinic, and he did get benefit from some money coming back his way. So we really can't prove it that strictly. We're going to let him go. Prosecution says, look, you know, it's one and two equals equals uh, equals three. It just, it just does, and and so that's what they try to do. But defense is not going to allow it. They got a great defense team. I happen to know one of the lawyers pretty well on it, okay. Joel Cohen. And it's should I invite real, him real, to the wedding too? Oh <laughs> uh, boy, he and, and and he, you know, he is a he's an intense guy. I mean, if you want to bring the bring a wedding, you know, kind of get, get, a, get a serious note in the wedding. He's a tense guy. He's a nice guy. <laughs> you want to bring but, it down. Um, There'll be enough buzz kills there already. No, <laughs> you know, this is going to be a wild well, ride. So, Paul, <laughs> so from the outside looking in, or you're handicapping this from Vegas, nothing happens to Sheldon Silver, right? Well, you know, the Bruno trial, I uh, always felt that, it would, that, you know, the justice was going to work out inside of, uh, of uh, Mr. Bruno. Here, I really do feel that um, they're going to get a conviction on this, even though uh, yeah. I do think they have a defense. I just feel like the general theme around Shelly Silver isn't quite, you know, everyone seems sort of like Bruno. It was a sort of sense that he was a, you know, good guy caught up um, in, a, in a mess. And, and I'm just not sensing Lower Manhattan is that same uh, love for Shelly. And that could, that could, it's going to be close, but that could just be, uh, you know, the tip of scales against Shelly. And then, and then, uh, then, then Silver's also got this uh, lawsuit from a sexual harassment case. Do we know where that is, or these two? Do these two things happen in the same courtroom? How does that work? No, no, that was going to be a whole separate gig. And you know, we had the se- sexual harassment case that they, um, you know, that they paid money on another taxpayer money legislator. To, to yeah, taxpayers, and he authorized that. And I guess what he did wasn't super atypical. Again, that one I just don't see going very far. It's one of these things that just kind of make it, you know. 
kind of cringe and, and say, what's going on down there with our money? What's going on down there? But I don't think that one is going to be such a big deal. Uh, but he's got his hands full. Uh, on these charges. Look, he's got plenty of money. He's going to get out of it. That's the answer. you got enough money, you get out of everything in this world. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, I just know that the uh, federal prosecutors learned from the Bruno trial, and I suspect that they're coming at this all differently. Where do we sit? Because, I, you know, I'm, I'm watching this, uh, the Lydia Colbita talking about the last five years of uh, of the state of New York and corruption, and, and like, mm-hmm. you know, 2014, there was, like, five different uh, cases of corruption in the state of New yeah. York, and there's, like, a, it, we're starting to look like, you know, Chicago over here. It's a little crazy. Mm-hmm. Someone's got to drop the hammer. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do think that we are right in the thick of it and probably come out on the other side, and we're going to have a, a healthier or at least a more monitored Albany, and we'll have less of this, but... Uh, so they talked about it for years, you know, the corruption, the corruption, and now it just seems like they're just making a move on it. And again, we'll see what happens. Again, I, I think even with a, uh, if he's found not guilty, I think there's going to be a tremendous amount of change going on in how they report their income as legislators. All right, we'll Paul, Paul Harding from Martin Harding Mazzotti. Uh, 1-800-LAW-1010, 1-800-LAW-1010.com. Thanks for joining us, Thanks, my friend. Paul.